All right, getting the rings off, no big deal. Remember, they are sharp, especially uh, the corners here, the edges. So if you're not too worried about getting cut, then go ahead by all means with your hands like I do. Just uh, if you've got fingernails, it helps. Okay, try not to score the piston when you're pulling them off. And just walk it around gently. Okay, the top one and the, and the second one on this engine are the same diameter, or same thickness, sorry. Okay, if you mess them up, it's not going to last you quite as long on the top because of the heat. Okay, so when you, the, a way to tell on this engine, the bottom one, I don't know if you can see that, there's a angle cut on the inside. So instead of being straight like this, it's straight and then it has just a little chamfer on the inside and that goes towards the bottom of the piston. All right, so that's how you tell your second one from your top one. And the oil rings are no big deal. Just nice thin little retainers. And then your slinger. Okay. Now in there, in your grooves, now you can see there's obviously a lot of carbon here. And, uh, if your rings are getting bad the oil will come up the side of the piston past the oil rings and everything and they'll, they'll get a lot of carbon on the sides here as well that's where most of this comes from it's just worn out rings even with new rings you'll get some carbon but when you start getting really thick like i've seen these so baked you couldn't even read the the information on the piston um but anyways, when it comes to cleaning these things, wire wheel's okay as long as it's a soft wire wheel. Don't go crazy. You don't want to scratch it. Don't let the wire wheel run this direction because you don't want horizontal or vertical scores. You want to go around the piston this way. That way the lines go this way. There's less chance of blow by. Really important on an older piston. Um, for cleaning out in here, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's quite a bit of carbon in behind where the piston's above and below, which will give you some grief when you go to put your new new rings in. Um, an old trick is to break off one of your compression rings, and if they're different sizes, you need one for each. In this case, they're the same. And the factory edge, not the broken jagged edge, but the factory edge, you can actually put in here and clean it. You can actually hear the carbon in there and you don't want to you don't want to twist it you just want to go straight and just go around it a couple times and clean up the carbon that's in there okay all right there's our piston after being on the wire wheel that's about 30 seconds maybe a minute at best you see there's still a few little chunks of carbon there uh, the ring lands could use a little more cleaning but, uh, hey, I'd put that in any engine. And you can see there's some scoring on the skirts, but you can't even feel that. That's just basically polishing the aluminum there, right? You can't feel them. All right, it only just stopped raining a minute or two ago, and I don't know how well you can see that, but you can see the rust forming already. I gotta get that thing in and get her toweled off. Yeah, 20 minutes and she's starting to rust. Oh, happy, happy day. I was cleaning my parts and a big box from Rock Auto showed up. <laughs> All right, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hone out these cylinders, uh, also known as deglazing. Um, the cylinders, if you remember the last video when I showed it at the very end there, they were really super shiny like a mirror. You don't want that when you put your engine back together because that glaze causes the rings to not seat and they don't seal there as well. Three wheelers, a four wheeler driving up. Um, so by 
putting just minute scratches into the cast iron cylinders, it helps the rings to seat. Um, there's a couple of different types. There's the old ball one here. This is for uh, small engine dirt bikes and whatnot. And then you got this guy here, which is three stones and they're spring loaded. So it exerts pressure outwards. You can adjust the pressure. Um, this setting here is perfect for, for larger engines. This don't work so good on the small ones like that. How it works is you want to put, what I use is diesel oil. You can use a mineral oil and everything. But I use diesel, it's readily available. And you just put it in slow speed and just cycle up and down and you want to get a nice cross hatch pattern going. Okay, so pretty wet. And you're just going to put those in your cylinder. Like so. Low speed and just cycle it up and down. Alright, it doesn't take a whole lot more than that. Alright, so there's a cylinder that hasn't been done yet. Here's the one we just did and it's still covered in the, the oil and the, and the little finite pieces of cast iron. Let me get some focus happening here. There we go. And there's one I just wiped out. You can see the top's not the greatest, but the piston doesn't come up here. It stops at the ring ridge, and there isn't really much of a ring ridge, but there's a little bit. You, you can't really see it until you start honing it. You can see now there's a ring ridge. And these lines are from the piston head, and that's where the top of the ring, where the ring would stop. It never comes higher than that. Okay, when the ring ridge gets really bad, if you rev the engine and the connecting rod stretches, it'll come up and hit that ring ridge and can break the top ring, and then you're in for a world of hurt. So anyways, all you do now, Let's just give it a wipe and you can see there's our cross hatch that needs a little bit more honing you can see there's some inconsistencies all right not too bad we'll get her nice like that one before we're done all right so we're gonna start with a clean rag here well reasonably clean we're just gonna jam it in there and get all of that metal dust essentially is what it is out of there and the diesel and everything else and you can see just how much cast iron came off right and the diesel obviously makes it stick well okay parts we got in uh, just a few minutes ago my main bearings my rod bearings my rings and my oil pump and then the gasket set. Still waiting on the cam, timing chain, timing gears, lifters, valve springs. So I can do the bottom end, I just can't do the top end yet. And that's fine, this will get me started. I hate seeing the crank sitting on the ground. I always get worried that I'm gonna drop something on it. Okay, so the oil seal, there's two pieces. All right, there's the bottom and the top. The important thing to know is that there's a right and a wrong way to put them in. You can see how it ramps up one way, okay? The higher part, or the ramp part, actually goes in the engine. So, if that's the front of the motor, it's going that way. Okay, so the block one is pretty easy. On here, you got these little ears, okay? You can easily tell how they go in all right that helps you to tell which way is front on these because you can't really screw them up because it's an L shape but again the raised sharp portion goes towards the inside of the engine okay, that's to prevent oil from going out all right so what you end up with is a small protrusion so it, you're never going to get that flush when you torque it down, it'll squeeze that and give you a good seal between this surface. All right, so don't go crazy trying to push it in. You'll never get it in. Okay, what I like to do is I like to start with that thrust bearing first. All right, the one with the sides on it. Um, 
When you look at the bearings, this is the other side of the thrust bearing, you'll notice one has a groove and the other doesn't. And there's also an oil hole, all right? The ones with the grooves go in the block. These you wanna keep spotless. I already wiped down all the journals on them. One side has a little tab. Hope you can see that. Okay, there's a little tab on one side and there's not on the other. You got to make sure that tab is in the right place. That is there to prevent the bearing from spinning. When you're putting these suckers in, the reason I do the thrust first is it only fits in one spot. Right? If you try to put it on one of the wrong journals, you'll notice there's side to side play. All right? You see what I mean here? Front to back. But when you get the right one, it actually fits in there snugly. There's my bearing, there's my oil hole, there's the little slot for the tab. All right, what I do is start this side, get it flush, and then just push down the finger pressure. Okay, you don't have to smack these. And if it's not in flat, you'll know because this side's low and that side's just a hair high. All right, and they're very soft. All you need to do is push them. And if it doesn't go, just take it right back out. Nothing to it and put it back again. All right? You can do that as many times as it takes to get it flush. So, as you can see, you can push them around just by pushing thumb pressure. Don't use any tools on them. They're very soft. Like, if you, press, if you were to squeeze that, I could break that with just two fingers. Alright, so you definitely don't want to go crazy on them. Hardest part is trying to keep your hands clean enough. Every time you touch the block, you get a little bit of crud on you. And I mean, a lot of this is just just carbon and oil, so there's not it's not the end of the world. But you don't want to spend all this money and take a risk of damaging anything. Okay. All right, so before I put the crankshaft in, I'm gonna put some fresh oil on here. And you can just use your fingers as long as your finger's clean. And just, just coat the thing, just hammer it, okay? Thrust, the thrust one, make sure you get oil on the sides. And that is to protect the engine for those first few precious seconds while the oil pump is starting to pick up oil and circulating it through the block. Very crucial you do this. All right. You can pre-lube an engine if you have the right tool. Uh, what it does is it goes down into the distributor hole, which is where the, the uh, oil pump is, and you can use a drill and just turn the drill, and you can hear the oil actually starting to go through the engine. If you don't have the tool, then you do you know, a really good job pre-lubing. engine block I get a little bit more dirt on myself okay, like I said it's just carbon and oil it's not like I'm putting grains of sand into my motor so it, it looks terrible but it's not as bad as it sounds okay so the same process for the K 
caps. Okay, same thing. There's a little tab. The tab has to go into the, the uh, cap on the right side. And you just push it down. Okay, it's important that when you cleaned your engine, you made sure that there was no debris that could end up between the two surfaces. And push it down flush. All right? And remember, there's a number on each one starting from the front. So number one goes on this side. The tab, there, some engines have an arrow that tells you which is the front. This doesn't have that, but the tabs go on the same side. You know that the crank tab is, uh, sorry, the, the engine block tab is already there. You line up this tab with that one. Before you put it in, healthy coating of oil, put it on the crank, put it in, and just finger it down so it doesn't fall. Now we'll tighten that up later. So we're going to go front to rear. Sometimes a little gentle persuasion just to seat them in there is necessary. Okay, I'm not really reefing on them and I'm not using a steel hammer, that's Teflon. This helps the caps pop into place properly. You can hear them when they bottom out. They make kind of a hollow thud instead of a sharp tap. You want to start from the center cap and then work your way outwards toward the end of the engine. Thing about torquing it is, don't start and go right to 75. Work your way up in steps. Go 50, 60, then your final torque, something like that. Okay. Start in the middle, work your way out towards the end. The last thing is to rotate the crankshaft and check for binding. All right, it should roll pretty easy, especially in this case where the crank is, you know, a little worn. If it was a new crank or a machine crank with oversized bearings, uh, it would be a little tighter, but there's nothing there, wrong there. One thing you can do is you can always check for in play, and I mean, if you're hearing a clunk, clunk, stop. You've you've got to do some work, okay? And that's the thrust bearing. You can sit here and test it, but we're doing a budget build, uh, and uh, it's not binding. It rolls beautifully, a lot better than it did. Okay, when I did this before, it would literally roll around because it was so loose. So that's pretty good right there. Yeah, just do a quick comparison here of the uh, rings. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, one's shiny and one's not. The shiny one in this case is your top ring. The dull or matte finished one is your second compression ring. You can also tell, if you remember, there was that bevel. There's just a little bevel on this one and there's not on the top ring. We're going to put a slinger on, and that just goes on any which way, like so, and you see there's the gap. The thing about that is you want to make sure the gap from the oil ring here, they're not in line with that gap. Okay, so put them somewhere else. This can be a little tricky because you got to go past all the other rings, the, the slots. You want to do it without scratching the heck out of your piston. Sometimes what will happen is it will fall into the top one. Well, if that happens, then don't worry about it. Just leave it there. You can get the next one over it. Okay, simple as that. And we have a gap here. Our slinger gap is back there. I want to put the other gap somewhere else. And these don't have a top or bottom. 
and they're pretty flexible so you can be pretty forceful with those all right so we got a slot there slot there and this linger opening is over there so they're all in different spots rolling good All right, your second compression ring, your middle ring. Okay. Another way to tell which is up. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. There's a little circle right there. That shows you the top. That's, there's different ways of doing it, but that's the way this company does it. Okay, and you have to be careful with these because you can break them. And like I said before, there is actually a tool to do this. And there you go. Okay, start it in a groove and just work your way around. If you pull on it too much, you can snap them, and that would be a bad day. There you go. Now, as far as right. seal power rod bearings, same basic procedure. They don't have the oil hole and the groove. Okay. Everyone is exactly the same. They say on the back standard. There's no top or bottom or anything like that. They're all exactly the same. Okay. Everyone has a tab. And everyone has a little half cutout on it. Okay. So when you look at it, there's a cutout side. It has a little V. And right through it. Okay. And the other side does not have a V. There is a number telling you which piston. That's number one. And it's on the cutout side. So all it takes is put line up your tab and push the little bearing in. And that's it. That's ready to go. these down and put the oil pump on and I'm done for the day. All right, 33s all the way around. I just like to check. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All the numbers match. Pistons are all saying they're in the right direction. Everything looks good. I double checked the mains. So the crank is now in. New oil pump. Baskets on. These flies are annoying today. <laughs> <laughs> 